To celebrate my relief upon my return, here's Dutch artist Carl Apple's 1972 Back on Earth number six figure in landscape with flower. It's a pencil drawing. Why did Apple give the picture this foretelling title? Why? Is he a Skywalker? This whole business of skywalking reminds me of a very intuitive and visionary statement from about 100 years ago made by scientist Ernest Rutherford to his contemporary Arthur Eddington. When once the latter was musing aloud at the dinner table as to whether we could ever come to know electrons for more than mental concepts. Now they're talking about electrons here. Not exist, Rutherford said, not exist? Why, I can see those little buggers as plain as I can see that spoon in front of me. Each and every human being sees things differently. It's so true. There is no one alive who is youer than you, says Dr. Seuss. It's also true that intuition, direct seeing and knowing, is a universal human ability. When you choose to use this wondrous tool of human perception, it filters out, it filters out everything but the natural truth of something. So Eddington says in his way, I cannot see electrons. While Rutherford uses his intuitive ability, which lets him say, I can see electrons. Lo and behold, a few years later, the Smithsonian report published this photograph announcing to the whole of the scientific community, electrons are definite entities. This is in 1915. So their, their argument was just probably 10 years prior to that. And here we are considering the subject of Skywalking 101. To actively think and walk among the stars. Can't be? Can't be? Why, I can see this happening just as plain as I can see that spoon in front of me. We're nearing the end here, and this is what I've been building up to. Here's the best contemporary example of skywalking to date. In 1998, Southern California architect Frank Gehry was commissioned to design a hotel uh, for a 150-year-old winery in the Rioja region of Spain. Like the notable crop circles phenomena of the early 90s, Gary's fantastic curvilinear structures began to appear here and there on the landscapes of several continents. My first encounter with Gary's visionary thinking was actually a photograph of the working model of this intended structure featured in the August 2003 issue of Architectural Digest magazine. When I first saw it, I simply swooned. I swooned. It was so beautiful. Then, two months later, October 2003, uh, the issue of Astronomy Magazine came in the mail. Always anxious about its arrival, I began browsing as soon as I got into the house. I stopped abruptly on page 32. The top left column displayed a Hubble heritage image of supernova remnant LMC N49. The LMC stands for Large Magellanic Cloud. It's located on our line of sight to this cloud galaxy, which hovers just below our Milky Way, as I showed you earlier. My voice of the silence suddenly whispered uh, once and then again. This is my voice of the silence. There's a surprise here. There's a surprise here. I was curiously looking over the image, listening to that. I started turning the page. I don't know how astronomers really orient themselves with ascension and declination and so on and so forth, but 
I started turning the page this way and that. I turned it horizontal. I rotated it 90 degrees, in other words. Nope, I didn't see it there. Then 90 degrees to the right. Nope, I didn't see it there. I knew something was there, though. What I did was I, I quickly decided to scan and save the image to my desktop, and I went to work on it. On the menu bar, uh, I selected free rotate, uh, but then I decided to just print it out and put it on my dining room table and start turning it. I could clearly hear my inner voice nudging my intuition. Come on, come on, come on. I could actually feel an answer zooming into me. I was in the rotation now at 115 degrees, 118, 120, and at 122.5, I suddenly stopped because I saw something. My mind flashed back to Gary's model for the hotel that I had scanned and saved onto my desktop palette 60 days before. All I had to do now was superimpose, just superimpose one image over the other. A very satisfying thought came to me as I gasped over this awesome, awesome composite image. The thought is this. If one picture is worth a thousand words, then one epiphany is worth a thousand images. Instead of the old adage of give me the leverage and I'll lift the world, it could now be said, give me the image and I'll lift the world.